Hello and welcome to Kushti TV, the straight talking YouTube channel. Yes, what have we got for you today? Before we start, you'll always remember to click and subscribe. Yes, we talk about organised crime. What comes to mind, Great Britain? You think Craze? The Cray twins, the Cray family, Joey Pyle? Comes to my mind, it comes to everybody when you think about organised crime. Yeah? And you go to America and you might think about maybe the Genovese family. And you might even think about the Gambino family. I can tell you, trust me, a gentleman I'm going to interview today, yes, has close ties with the Craze, the legendary Joey Pyle, and distantly connected to the Genovese and Gambino family. Yes, it's all yours right here on Christie TV. Not Netflix. No, not that. Not Sky. No other channel. Right here, Christie TV. The gentleman in question, it's all my pleasure to have on the show. He is, of course, a legend in his very own right, Mr. Ronnie Field. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, so, Ronnie, tell me, mate, um, we have a life, and it started, so tell us about your childhood from the earliest memories. Shit. Was it? Absolutely. Yeah. I was born in Epson. Yeah. Um, Went to live in Chain Village with my grand. Um, she was an old tyrant. There was uh, seven brothers and sisters. There was more than that, but some of them died before I was born. Um, she tortured me brothers. She didn't torture me. Uh, my uncle Fred used to bash us out a bit, but I never got tortured. So they, a bit, Ted and Peter and Billy. I know you've got your older brothers. Yeah, I'm, yeah. The, I'm the youngest, I'm the youngest out of all of them. You're right. Um, she, she treated them really bad, you know. Um, when a doodle bug landed in Lumley Road, uh, the side of the house blew out, and Brother Ted and, and uh, Peter were strapped in bed in the, in the attic and ended up in the garden. And my mum said that's the fastest granny ever come out of the cellar to get them unstrapped before the, the wardens come in, uh, yeah. the air raid wardens. Yeah, she was a nasty piece of work. That's sad to hear, but may I ask, may I touch on why weren't you with your parents? What was the situation there? Uh, me, me dad, me dad um, left, left us all. Uh, he, he was in prison, but he left us before that. Um, I always thought he was it was a bit of an error to me, being bomb disposed and all that, but after getting to know my sister Pat, after many, many years, uh, it was a bit of an arsehole. Presumably, sister Pat's quite a bit older than you then, was she? Yeah, she's, she's, just, just, she's yeah. just died a little while ago. Bless her. Yeah. yeah, there's only me and my sister Sissy left now. Right. Uh, um, Did you say Sissy? Sissy, yeah, my sister Sissy. Do you know my mum's name? Sissy. Sissy, yeah. yeah. She was one of, one of seven, and uh, my mum's name was Mary. After her mum, but she got called Sissy. She was the only girl of seven. We've yeah. got that in common. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. So so uh, then your sister Pat told you that um, otherwise. And what was the otherwise you learnt? May I ask? Um, yeah, it was, you know, he was always off with other women and all that. But he he, he, learnt, he was in bomb disposal during the war. And he learnt to blow things up, so he carried on blowing things up when he came home, blowing safes and things like that. Oh, right, so, and, so uh, he took his, his, his um, skill skill to a criminal skill? Yes, yeah. right. he, um, they'd done the um, Auckland Aircraft Factory right. in Kingston, Yeah. and uh, they, they took all the wages there and all that, Right. but they also took the plans for the area jump jet. Right. So they, they didn't have to just tell the old field looking off, looking for them, they had special branch and all that. So. And was it was the plans by um, the area jump jet, was that, was that by design or by mistake? No, by mistake, just right. you, just, just when, to, when you yeah. empty a safe, you scoop everything out. And the nicest way, they wouldn't have had the knowledge yeah, what they were yeah. worth to somebody no. else. They, they probably would have been to the right he, person. He wouldn't have sold them to no one. He was, he was a bit, he was um, British through and through. He was an Englishman. Yeah. I've got to give him. Well, that's good. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, a patriotic all the way. Yeah, he yeah. was every word I was looking for. Yeah, he was patriotic. Yeah. Good. I for mean, the young viewer at home, wages. I mean, he blew a safe to get some wages. Now you think about it, you get paid um, monthly. You net your cash don't exist almost. But in those days, it was all wages, and it was a massive part of the robberies, wasn't it? So yeah, safe blowing wages, in yeah, oh, a big yeah. fat factory yeah, yeah. like the was it the Orchard, Did you say? 
Uh, was it the Orca factory for the Area Jump Jets? What was oh, the name? Oh, okay, yeah, in Kingston. Yeah, yeah. In Kingston, yeah. yeah. So a massive amount of wages. Oh, massive. massive so, so anyway, so Dad, Dad become a criminal, and um, I yeah, so he was always a criminal. He was even a criminal when he was a soldier, selling stuff and all that. You know, I mean, but he was doing bomb disposal, and I thought, you know, made made him my hero. And tell me, sister told me really what he was like because yeah. he left home when I was five. He left everybody. Left me mum. Uh, left us to the mercy of my grand and my uncle Fred, who weren't very nice. Well, I suppose they'd give us a roof over our heads and all that, but... Um, yeah. Uh, my sister Pat was um, in the workhouse, and my mum and my, mum and my dad were there. He was off with some bird, you know what I mean? But Pat was in the workhouse with my mum, you know what I mean? And yeah. When I was born, um, Pat was 13, I think, and um, I was just handed to her to... Really? So she, 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 she her, sister yeah. become almost mother, mother figure in yes, between almost, yeah. Yeah, she did, yeah. She always looked after me, yeah. Always. It was a tough old start then, mate, wasn't it? It wasn't a good start, but I didn't know no different anyway. No, well, I mean, you know, I, I always say this, uh, and, and to other interviews, when, when I was a child, I had the love of my mum and dad. I thought it was nearly compulsory that everybody had that love and that bond. Because I was, I was one of six, baby for eight years I was, what, um, I was the fourth one down, I was a baby for eight years and I thought it was compulsory that people would have mums and dads that loved them, but you sadly discover it's not always quite the case, is it? No, my mum, lo my mum loved us, she loved all of us, but she did, she couldn't cope with my grand, no one could. I, I mean, I tried to strangle her once uh, when I was a bit older. So she always left me alone after that. She almost sounds like a wicked old lady almost. Was she, she was a wicked old lady, yeah. But I suppose mm -hmm. in her own way she thought she was doing well, thought she was doing good, you know, but she's very brutal. Well, that's, the, that's the problem. Very, in them days, yeah. it was a natural thing to be brutal to people. Well, know. they come through, the only defence I can say to these people, my dad said he had a tough, one of his grandfathers um, was brutally tough. He said he had a grand that he remembered was absolutely adoring from another side. And he said he had a grand father that he thought was he thought too rough but when when we reflect on it you wonder they've been through two world wars and you re, you wonder That's if right. if they 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 knew little different really to be tough because excuse my friend but fucking fighting all over europe and the world yeah yeah, yeah. just as there is as there is now but that to to, to even more extreme isn't it you know we're war in ukraine but i mean world war one and two was at the highest level of war wasn't it of course it was yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. So did you did you school in Epsom? No, I schooled in Cheam. We went to live in Cheam. Yeah. Uh, couple of houses down from the Prince of Wales pub. Yeah. Uh, next door to the used to be auction rooms. So I went, I went there. Um, Morden Road, boys school, um, Chatsworth Road infants, Chatsworth Road seniors. Yeah. And left as soon as I could. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I was the only one there without a uniform. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I went off to uh, the travel with the fairground yeah. when I was supposed to be at school, you know what I mean? I'd come back with my hair all, all long and all that, you know what I mean? And a uh, bit of a teddy boy coat on and all that and uh, went to school like it and went home again about an hour later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Cheam for the viewer at home was just southwest of London, about 12 miles from the city centre, just southwest of London? Yeah. Approximately? Yeah, about 10. 10, 12 about miles, 10, yeah. 10, 12 yeah. miles, yeah, Cheam really. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. so you're just laying it almost between Sutton and Epsom now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so, um, so tell us, um, what was your first fight? Um, because um, going forwards to come backwards, you, you, there, is, there is some times, and we'll talk, touch on it later, trust me, <laughs> viewers at home, there is some violence involved here. Only what, what was bit. your only a little bit? What was your first memory of a fight? I lost it. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah, I, 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 I wasn't, I'm, I'm, I'm not a stand up. Which, which age were you at this stage? Um, about 13 or something like that. But so you had a stand up straight, huh? Yeah, and I didn't. And you finished that. second? Yeah, I didn't. In the two horse race? That was the last one I ever had. That was the last one, was it? Last straight, yeah. Last straight, yeah? Yeah, I, I thought that ain't no good. I don't, there's no point Did you in, revenge your attack on this bloke or were you happy just shaking his hand and just saying, oh, I'm going to learn otherwise? Uh, I don't think I shook his hand. I think I met him about four years later somewhere. Um, right. We, uh, I won that time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I'm not going to ask by which means, but I know it weren't fisticuffs. No. But you levelled up. But it's more than one way of skinning the cat. Course, yeah. And um, yeah. I'm, I'm a great believer in that. I, I, I'm a boxer, I'm a straightener man, yeah. My, my stuff was organised straighteners, go out, see who, see who the toughest. But I will say this, 
if I took a liberty with people, yeah, and somebody leveled me up, I'd fully expect it. If somebody come and shot me for being a liberty taker, a bully, I'd fully accept it. So I can really see where you're coming from when you say, um, level things up. Because people shouldn't take fucking liberties, excuse my French, but they shouldn't take liberties, should they? I weighed, I weighed about nine stone, you know what I mean? If that. Yeah. And he was bigger than me, and he done me. He done me, yeah, fair enough, you know what I mean? And, uh, I accepted that, but I didn't like it. But I, I met him a few years later, and um, I paid it was him. one all. I paid no, it was one. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't want to decide it then. No, he didn't. No. So he did win that one. You win that one, and we ain't going to fight free. Not in this case. He didn't anymore. want to know again after that. No, because so I, I, I've never been a fighter with me. I, I use anything: tables, chairs, glasses, bottles, knives, baseball bats, anything. I can't you get a W. Anything you get a win. Yeah, I can't, I can't. Defend yourself. I can't, I can't fight. I can't fight. I can't That's fight. It, but you know a way out to. But I don't lose. You know, well, it ain't bad, then, is it? No, ain't a bad record if somebody who can't fight um, seems to win. So it ain't too bad. No. Yeah. And if, so, I did, if I did, if I did lose, then I'd be back. You'd be back? I you think everyone knows that. You'd yeah. be back if you could be back. If I weren't dead, then I'd you be ain't back. finished, is that? Yeah, 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 they don't yeah. kill me, then I'll be back. Yeah, yeah well, that's, um, that was a, a, a similar mentality of um, criminals yeah. like. I'm not, I'm not, com I'm not comparing you, you, your own individual. But thank you, Fraser was a bit like that, I think, wasn't he? You're similar to yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Fraser was like that. Yeah. yeah. If you didn't do him, he'd be back, wouldn't he? Mm. Well, I've only been nicked three times, so I've got away with nearly everything. <laughs> what was your first piece of crime? When I was, when I was young. Um, I think a load of copper, I think. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm a scrap dealer. Yeah. So if we'd have been different areas, you could have been coming to me, couldn't you? Yeah. A bit yeah, of scrap. Yeah, yeah. In the old days, we didn't need no identification and we could pay you in cash. Yeah. Now, in the scrap business, um, you know, not that I buy stolen scrap, because I don't. No, you wouldn't. But, uh, and I wouldn't now, because you've got to put an identification to it and I've got to pay in um, electronic transfer. But back in the old days, joking aside, it was all, you could um, it. if you had a bit of lead away or a bit of uh, copper away. If you were dishonest. If you were dishonest, it was yeah. yours, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a scrap you waiting to take it. <laughs> so that was, it. that was your first crime. So, did you ever have a job? Yeah, I, 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 was, I worked. Yeah, I, was, I was a landscape gardener. Um, tree fella. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was a fencer. I was a good fencer. Yeah. But I was a good tree fella and all. Right. But, um, I didn't like the cold. I didn't like getting wet. And uh, it's always dry on a bank. So you were seasonal, <laughs> more seasonal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it wouldn't rain in a bank? No, it wouldn't, no, unless the sprinklers come. <laughs> so, um, what age did you become, you, you sort of lost all aspiration to be doing straight work and you become a criminal? What sort of age were you? I suppose 16, 16. Yeah. Did, was there a time, because all criminals, no matter who, who you are, in the nicest way, somebody as big as yourself, you don't just get elevated there, there's a gradual, there's, no, there's a gradual were, process. No, so no. were you doing a bit of crime and work? I, mean, I was doing petty things, but then uh, Joe, I met Joe. I met Joe and... Um, and when we're saying Joe, are we meaning the legendary Joey Pyle? I take Joey Pyle, oh, yeah. Uh, he, he took me under his wing. So to speak, and um, yeah, I, I was um, I was in a pub one day, and he said to me, uh, "Do you want to go to work?" And I said, uh, "I knew what you meant straight away." Yeah, we are throwing some roses up somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said, "Yeah, I do." Yeah, and uh, I went and done something for him. I was only I was very young. I, I think I must have been the youngest person doing this, and. Um, I got six grand for it, which was a lot of money when I was young, you know what I mean? And uh, I went on from there and uh, I was with him ever since. And we're talking give or take, um, without revealing your age, um, we give or take and correct him on maths for around 60 years ago, so six grand's fortunes. Yeah, it was, yeah. You could yeah. probably walk down and bought one of these beautiful houses. But he didn't send me to clean someone's windows. <laughs> no, exactly. Well, that'd be a well-played cleaning job. I'll, I'll, I'll be putting my application for me tomorrow yeah. before we get... Um, it was a sort of a cleaning job. Yeah, <laughs> you clean, clean some money. <laughs> clean, clean something out by the yeah. sounds of it. Yeah. Here we go then. What we um, Because we are going to reveal, no doubt, um, you 
again going forward, coming back. Um, there was there was no hiding. You were a blagger, and a blagger at home for you audience. Don't know what a blagger is. Americans, it's basically an armed robber. Yeah. So you're off and out there as a career criminal, armed robber, and that's your main port of call. Is this your main source of criminality? Um, that and violence. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was a blagger, yeah. I was a, yeah I You're was, a blagger and, yeah. and violence, all, all the violence to, you know, to, to, to well, obviously, all, you know, not violence for the fun of it, but no, criminal, no, never, criminal no, violence. No, no, I never, Somebody I was, needs levelling up. If I went, went to hurt someone, if, if I was asked to hurt someone, it'd only be one of, one of like us, it wouldn't be a straight guy. It'd be another villain who, who got hurt. It wouldn't be... Oh, he's fouled the rules, so he's, yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's yeah, either he, not paid. He, he took a liberty. Yeah, he's he, either bullied or he's right. threatening to bullied talk or something. Thing, One yeah, of the three, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 So he's gonna get, it's called levelled up, isn't it? He needs levelling. It's called levelling, yeah. 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 So when you've got 6k in your pocket, I, I take it for a job, a bit of work. And the nicest way, I don't like swearing too much, but who the fuck wants to go and work for three quid an hour as a gardener when you just made 6k? Two so fifty, surely two now, fifty a week, two, two, two pound ten shillings a week. Yeah, well, two two pound ten shillings. Yeah, two pound fifty pence. So there you go, <laughs> two pound fifty pence, old money. This is before decimalisation for you younger viewers. Some um, shillings was a, almost a equivalent. Um, ten bob was fifty p when it equivalent. Yeah, yeah. And um, two and a half pound a week, and he's got six k and one hit. So I'm assuming now, I'll stand corrected, but um, it's goodbye gardening and hello. Um, to the next oh, bit of work. Yeah, I still potted about, but I wasn't, didn't have a lot of interest in it. I started buying, getting my suits made, my shirts made, my shoes made. Uh, I like to dress properly, you know what I mean? You wouldn't have been gardening and all that lovely no. Savile Row gear, would you? No, no. no I wouldn't. No. <laughs> I did buy a pair of jeans. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're pretty much off there and out there, and you, start, you started this, and you, you don't get, you seriously, so of course you, you've been you've been brushed with the law, you've been pulled in, you've been nicked, but you've done your first lot of porridge when you were like 40 years of age. Is that correct? Yeah, I think I was 40, yeah. 1976, whatever that makes me. So you've had a good old you've had a good old run of um, you know, uh, you've had a good clean sheet there for a while. You've, yeah. been, you've been pulled in no doubt, but you got you, your first uh, with the porridge was, and that was a black job, but over one of the airports. Is that correct? No, no, that come later. No, that, oh, that come later. I, I was, uh, it was on the wages office up in uh, up in Leeds. Right. And um, that's a long way from London, isn't it? Well, we used to swap. Oh, did you? Yeah, they'd give us something, and we'd give them something, and uh, that, that's how it used to work in them days. You couldn't do it now. You can't trust no one. Without mentioning names, uh, what, what sort of towns would you swap information? Would, would it be Leeds City Centre, for example, Manchester? It was Leeds. It was Leeds. Leeds, Leeds, Leeds and London. Yeah, yeah. Leeds, Manchester. Yeah. Manchester. So all the, all the big northern cities, they'd swap a bit of work and vice yeah. versa? Well, they'd, they'd get in touch down here and uh, we'd go and do that and, and they'd do something down here, you know what I mean? And, uh, and this, this all come via, via Joe's connections, which at this stage with Joe be, be, be oh, all, leading, leading everybody, stuff. Everybody who ever knew was, was um, through Joe. Really. Yeah. 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 Except for the people, you know, I met, I met a few people in Parkhurst and that. Yeah. Uh, good people, solid people. Blackie Saxton, um, he's dead now. Uh, Ronnie Easterbrook, he's dead now. Yeah. You know, a couple of. Couple of Proper, proper people, yeah, yeah, really good people. So when was your first proper nick? I thought, I thought it may have been the airport job, but I've, um, I've done a little bit of research, trying to, trying to do my own work, and plus you hear stories, so I've got that wrong. So what was your first uh, porridge was for a job, did you say, was it in Leeds? Yeah, Leeds, yeah, Leeds, yeah, wages office, yeah. Wages office, yeah. Yeah, and we, we, got, we got nicked up there, uh, coming away from a bit of work, coming down the motorway, and all of a sudden, um, we suddenly realised there was no cars behind us, just a rolling roadblock and just cut the coaches across the motorway and on the embankment. We used to have sharp shears in them, blue overalls and all that and right. my mate said to me... When you say sharp shooters, was that the police? Yeah, old Bill, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, they were known as sharp shooters, they had blue overalls on them? Yeah, I don't know what yeah. they were called, didn't they? F, F something, F19 yeah. I think, something like that. Yeah. And, uh, 
But these were the boys with with their own oh, arms. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They had all the rifles and that and all that. Yeah. They didn't have uh, automatic what, things. Then they had the old DM films, you know. Yeah. And the telescopic sights on. And uh, my mate said to me, "Don't lose your clothes. I'm terrible temper. I mean, whatever you do, man, don't lose your temper because we'll be all dead." <laughs> really. And I looked around. And I said, "I'm very calm." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So you can imagine that you've, you've done a job. How far did you get down the motorway? Well, uh, it was a funny story. We come, come out in a bit of work. Uh, it, it went a bit tense up. Some people got shot. And it, we changed over. When you say people got shot, wrong was that? Was that um, people? Uh, people trying to be heroic? Yeah, it was people uh, uh, got trying in to way stop of, you. Uh, yeah, got in the way of a bit of work. It was Occupation West, really. as they call it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I blew, a, blew an hole through a door. Yeah. Which, which, um, it was supposed to be a big fire door, but it wasn't. It was only one of them egg box doors, which um, got caught a few people, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. We left there, we, we come out of there as people have had us with spanners and all that. And, uh, we, we, excuse my language, we fucked them off, you know? Yeah. Got rid of them and um, changed cars three times. And uh, it was coming down the M1. We changed our plan, we should have done, but we did. Right. Because it had come on top. But um, should have stuck to what we said. So uh, we're coming down the motorway, and uh, a little boy had seen us, little boy delivering meat. When his mother had said, Don't they look like bank robber? I mean, what's a bank robber look like? Yeah. I mean, we took overalls off me, I think I was like this, but with a yeah. suit, you know what I mean? And. Um, I More like a banker than a bank yeah, robber. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and uh, he took the number of the car, uh, as your tailor told him to. Yeah, <laughs> came on pills. Yeah, and um, they called us. And uh, ended up in. Um, Do you reckon they've looked down the M1 going safe for the mere fact that London accents have come out? Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, when you look at, get out of the back of the road, and said, oh, yeah, you're a normal yeah, bit. Right, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, you know, they, they, they you know, I mean, it's. They're sharp enough when the the top end well, police are recognised nice something like that, and obviously people looking always, back on it, people always think the old bill's stupid, but they ain't. No, no, that's what I'm saying. No, when you're not, stupid, when you're know. talking about old bill at that level, you're not you know the know thing I mean? they are. <laughs> uh, they ain't. They ain't. Yeah, when you when you're talking about um, in the nicest way, both localised police, but the, you know when they go this serious crime squad, they, they ain't no fools, are they, mate? No. No. It's a game of cat and mouse. Sometimes you win, sometimes they win, eh? That's yes. right. Yeah. So, so what did? So, how many of you got nicked on that job? Uh, four of us. Four, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Terry Mundy, he's dead now. Pat Sweeney, he's dead now. Uh, Clive was a driver. I don't know if he's still alive or not. And me. So, when it said keep calm, you knew it was game up. And little defence in court. Did you did you did you go guilty? Is it something you ever done go guilty? Or just was I, it was it easier well, to? You just you completely I, to right to I, it. I, I shot the people, so uh, I said I'd go guilty, and uh, I done it. So you take yeah. There was there was no there was no, no, no defence. No, no point at all going down. Yeah, for shooting sure people. So it was a bad day, bad day at work. Um, it was a bad all the day, way bad around, work, unintentional yeah. injuries. And what did you get for that? Twelve. Twelve. And four tens, and eight, a few ones and so six and a nine, but twelve yeah. really, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's and what did you serve out of that twelve? Um, nearly all of it, I think. Was it a different system? Is it, is it half now on good behaviour or now? It's half now, it's two thirds then. It's, yeah. it's two thirds then, so it was a nine year stretch more or less then, give or take. Or a bit more, was it? A, a little, little bit more, yeah. yeah. I went to Parkhurst and um, years, yeah. I ended up there about two o'clock in the morning and uh, as I walked in, the screw said to me, you must be someone important. I said, why is that going on? He said, there's some people waiting to meet you. You've gone to Reg. Oh, right. Yeah, waiting to wait there. Yeah. They'd let them out of themselves at two o'clock in the morning. Really? <laughs> so the influence they had then, and we're talking and about 1976 then, was it you said? Except 19, that was about, I don't know what year that was then. About 78, something like that. Yeah, because you've always got your trial yeah, in an yeah, arm. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so you're, you're, so they're probably about the best part of eight, eight, nine years well, of their Joe, sentence. Joe told them I was coming, you know what I mean? So they arranged to meet me, oh, they'd give me a big box of 
uh, sugar, tea bags, tobacco, biscuits, chocolate. Great treats in prison though, aren't they? Oh. I mean, out here, we just go to the shop and get them yeah, and take no, them no, apparently, no. but when, when all your liberties, all your rights are taken away. They had everything, they had everything. And, and I was mates with them for, well, from that day, I also ended up visiting Ronnie in Broadmoor. I was in Maidstone with uh, Reg. Yeah. Sit on the same centres, I think. Something like that, I think I was, yeah. And um, I used to go and see Ronnie in Broadmoor. He used to terrify the lot of family. Was he a menacing bloke from Presenton? It's just the way he talked and looked at you. Really? Yeah. Give I us like, an example, could you? Well, he used to sit. He used to just sit there and he's, he'd sit there like that and he'd be talking away and, and it, his feet would go like that and he'd say, uh, "I've got to go now, gentlemen. I've got to go now." Because yeah, he was going to go. He was going to. Really? And he didn't really want to hurt you. Upset his mates, but the same was wrong there. But he, he just, he just used to go in. Ticking uh, time bomb, was he? All the time. Really? All the, t all the time. I, I have heard stories like that, but but um, was, was Reggie was Reg, Reggie was not he was, he was a bit more level headed, was he? Reg, Reggie was calmer, but some people always said that the most dangerous one was Reggie. Cause yeah. With Ronnie, you knew. With Reggie, you didn't. Reggie, you, Reggie would um, sneak up and stab you in the back or whatever. You know, so you like could see a warning sign maybe with Ronnie. You could see him maybe getting agitated. Yeah, he, or he, he'd come straight agitated. With, with, with Reggie, he'd, 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 he'd do it, yeah. when, 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 as, in, as in when you well, maybe not expect Reggie would be talking to you about it all, all the while he was planning to do you. You know what I mean? Red, uh, Ronnie would just come straight at you and tell you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it was a menacing bloke, yeah. Very frightening. Anyone who says they weren't scared of him is a liar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, see, it's easy, easy for anybody to say now oh, that I wouldn't be scared, yeah. but, but no, I mean, we're scared. taking it from a man who's, who, who's, who's gone out on a daily basis putting his liberty on, on the line, a man that's never had hardly a straight fight in his life, that's always fought with wow. weapons, yeah, and won. And there's a man telling you that, um, yeah, he was a menacing bloke. So I think that's, um, that's worth keeping in. Um, in the legend, isn't it really? When you think yeah. about it, you get those reputations. They don't reputations such such big as Ronnie Cray you don't come by mistake. It's normally um, by this. No. Not, um, if not by the design, by 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 what's happened. No, well, people, people like uh, Freddie Foreman and that. I mean, he he knew, he knew him probably better than anybody. They always said you you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't trust them, not. Business, well, but you, you couldn't trust how they they could turn just yeah. just a drop of an act, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and uh, Fred's no idiot. Well, Fred, you don't get a name like Brown Bread Fred by the mistake either. The he, other he, 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 he didn't like that man. <laughs> he didn't like it. I'm sorry, no, Fred. He, he didn't. Sorry, like Fred. You take that back. I'll call you Mr. Foreman when I see you. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie, you done you done your first bit of porridge. You said you done the best part of it was two thirds. Then no doubt. Was there anything where there was a little bit of misbehaviour inside? But you get rid of additional time for that, was there? I was always um, there, was a, there was a riot in Parkhurst, and uh, that was a bit nasty because there was only 198 of us in Parkhurst, 800 cells, 198. So what happened to all the empty rooms? They rent them out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd have a cell. There was a case next. Uh, they put me next door to a. Uh, He's a called Brian. I won't say his last name because he might, he might, he, he's probably still in there. <laughs> but um, he, he'd already done God knows how many years. But uh, he took to me, and um, I used to go weightlifting with him, and he was he was one muscly. He was one good weightlifter, and um, he kept himself to himself. He, was, he, was, he killed a geezer with an axe, but he, they, all the faces stayed clear of him because. He weren't no fool, you know what I mean? He, yeah. he, 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 was, he was a dangerous man. Less he, more he, weight than anybody else in the um, prison gym. He, he, and he killed somebody with an axe. You, you ain't going to treat him. I think he needs a bit of room. He, he, he could push some weight, you know, with bench press, which, which was my, my favourite thing, bench pressing. I was very good at that. Yeah. I used to have a barrel chest. Oh, I've got a saggy chest now. <laughs> A saggy chest and a saggy belly. Saggy is that your it's a good way, good way to do your time, though, I suppose, with the regime in, training. In part, was, um, that's, I used to go, go, go to the gym with Billy. Uh, I don't know if he's still there, so I don't say his last name, but um, he was a friend of uh, Ronnie Knight and that, and um, used to go with him. 
<coughs> he, he, was a, he was a good mate there for it all. And um, we used to tell me how you do, help each other with the weights and all that, you know, spot yeah. them and all that, you know. I mean, uh, I got quite big myself, but uh, no, nothing like them. I mean, Brian was, Brian was so, he had muscles on top of muscles. He wasn't a bully, he hated no. bullies. He's just a very quiet man, kept himself to himself. In fact, I'm sure I've read something a couple of years ago about him that he was coming up for, for a release, so he must have done 30 odd years now, I think maybe more. But he's done a hell of a lot of time, you know, and he, very quiet man. He used, he used to do a little bit of cooking downstairs, because downstairs in Park there seems to be a stove. And yeah. You could warm a few things up, and he used to just do me like a little bit of Chinese, you know, greens and rice yeah. and a bit of onion in it. And Sounds like a good old boy to be a mate with. I mean, he's a strong man, he's a yeah. dangerous man, he's yeah. an uninterfering man, he can cook. Yeah, he seems like yeah, a bad old boy to do a bit of porridge I'll with. I'll do a bit of cooking myself, you know what I mean? Pleasure. Pilchard yeah. curry. Yeah, <laughs> filtered curry, curry, yeah. Filtered curry, yeah. Spaghetti bolognese. Yeah. A uh, bottle of tomato sauce. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're making the best of what you've had. Yeah, that's you, right. It's yeah, called adapting into fighting, isn't it? Yeah. We used to chip in. Yeah. When, when, I, got, when I got to Maidstone, um, so I, I met Sid and uh, Sidney's boy Paul, and um, Sid, Sid died. So I know Sid. He, he, he was a very angry man, but. He was a lovely fellow, him and his... Him and his what do they call him? Cyanide Sid? He was very dangerous. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> he was a lovely man, and his boy, Paul. In fact, I was in touch with him until a little while back, and I don't know what's happened. I don't know whether he's dead or, or he's banged up or something, because all of a sudden, um, I stopped getting Christmas cards and that. Because I sent him a Christmas card to his, to his address, and uh, they passed it on to him, and uh, he told me his dad had died, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then uh, we arranged to meet, but the meeting never happened. So, and I've had people, I've had asked Dave Courtney and that to look for him over Thames B, but. Is that that way, Southeast? Yeah, yeah, so no, like, yeah, no one, yeah. No one knows where he is. Just going so back, back sorry. If you're looking at this, Paul, get in touch with me. There we go, Paul. So, tune in to Cushy TV or tell somebody and um, Someone get, in, get in touch with the governor himself. <laughs> Just going back, is it, Parker, she said it was. Um, 800 cells, 198 prisoners, so it's four for one cells. Was that, was that for the severity of how, how tougher criminals no, they, you yeah, were? They, they, they had to have... They, they wouldn't put too many people in there. We, we, we had a few tear up. There was a lot of IRA there. Yeah. We, you know, in fact, there must have been about 40 IRA there. The rest was uh, mostly uh, well, robbers, one murderer. One person nicked for murder. There was a lot of murderers there, but only one person doing a sentence for murder. And um, yeah, there were some dangerous people there. There was some idiot. There was a couple of idiots there with just bullies. Yeah. Uh, I got a clamp off of one of them, and um, as I was going on a visit, which was should never give someone a clamp when they're going on a visit, you know. And um, I see the error of his ways. It was like a day. Yeah, less on talk by the sounds of it. Yeah, I was just going tell, to go. tell me, Saint Ronnie, you're being a patriotic man, I can see you English yeah, right there, which I, I mean I rightly because you're from England and, and Britain I'm English, respectively. I'm, I'm I'm, English, well I, I say I say always put always fill out my form nationality, English, British, always put English. I'm proud to be British but yeah, I'm English, just like British, yourself, yeah. Always, I never put British. Yeah. Always I put British, English British, yeah, yeah, just to clarify what I am. Yeah. So we're both very patriotic, yeah. And we want peace moving forward some of these turbulent times. But how tough must it have been for a patriotic man like you, stand no nonsense, back in the days when, when we didn't have this political view, how tough was it being locked up with the IRA that have just uh, an explosive bomb off, you know, arguably in a shopping centre or something, which I mean, which did happen on many, many occasions, so we can't yeah. dispute that. How, how difficult must it have been to be Near the blokes where you're completely separated. We did. We 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 didn't talk. I, I mean, I got very friendly with an IRA man, and uh, he wasn't a bomber. He wasn't a bomber. Uh, I got friendly with him in Belmarsh. Uh, in fact, um, I heard the helicopter come in, so I knew something. Someone new was. I thought it was Joe coming in, but it was someone new coming in, and. Um, 
uh, uh, all come in, you know, and um, uh, the cell door opposite me opening. A few minutes later, slammed shut. And then it opened again, and uh, I was just sitting on my bed. Then my door opened, and I thought, what have I done now? Excuse me. And, um, by the way, cheers. Yeah, cheers. It's, it's nice to, um, it's nice to have a little tip while we have a chat. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, um, yeah. I've got the, mainly got the gentleman's um, privilege of his company. Also, we're going to have a little tip It ain't too bad, is it? No. Yeah, so this helicopter comes in. Yeah, the helicopter comes in. Someone goes in the cell office of me. There was only about, there was 12, 12, 12 cells to a spur, four spurs to the unit, uh, four cells to the unit. Uh, as as our unit, as our landing was the only one occupied, each landing separate separate building. And they opened me up and they said, do you want a shower? So I said, uh, unusual, you know what I mean? I went, yeah, well, I'll shower and eat as soon as they have one, I'd always go, you know, three times a day if I could. Yeah. And uh, they said, uh, child killer just come in. I went, yeah, yeah, and they said, are you having a shower? I went, oh yeah, nonsense don't go in the unit. Right. So I knew, yeah. I knew he wasn't a nonce. Yeah. So uh, I said, oh yeah. So he explained, he explained to me, I've done a couple of bits of pork porridge on remand, short bits. And thankfully I'm happy with that. So what's the difference? I, I, I thought some of you like, um, like, like a child killer or a nonce would be what they call Rule 43 or something? Is that 43 yeah, they, wing? Yeah, they're going. Which is a, a separate wing for themselves. They're, they're what not, is a unit? They're, what, what does that mean? The exactly? unit is a special, it was a special built prison in the corner. In right. the corner of Belmarsh Prison. And um, the IRA, I was, I was in, in uh, Brixton unit and uh, the IRA escaped from there. And there was one either side of me and another one a little bit further down, but they shot their way out. So um, over the next couple of days, they, they was coming in, interviewing us, and they said, oh, see if we knew anything, and no one knows anything. And then, then they shipped me out to Belmarsh. I was the very first man in the Belmarsh unit. They were still sweeping up the um, the wood chippings on the floor yeah. from doing the locks and all that, you know what I mean? And uh, that was very oppressive. You was locked up 23 and a half hours a day. You had nothing. Um, then then they, all the rest of my firm, but our firm, not my firm, the rest of us sort of come there from from Brixton, then, then, then another uh, uh, a Greek Cypriot firm come, right, right good people, they all come and we started getting a bit organised. So we started having a few rucks. All, all we wanted, all we wanted was some hot water, make a cup of tea. Yeah. We wanted hot food, there was a beautiful kitchen in there, which was never used, the food used to come over from the main wing, the time it got to us, because everything was always cold. So we had, we had a tear up, got a kettle for some hot water, and then we had another tear up to get a toaster. So we could have a bit of toast. I know it seems silly, a bit of toast. But we had a bit of, so we could have a cup of tea and a bit of toast, a bang up. I mean, we was in our cell most of the time. You know, and so we, we ended up getting a toaster, we ended up getting a kettle. Not a kettle, a uh, hot water outside. You couldn't have a kettle in your cell. I think they got yeah. them now. But we used to use it, so they open you up one at a time, you go out and get a jug of hot water. And they used to stand quite a way away from you because hot water is very... Yeah. Yeah, so they... Worse well, with sugar apparently. Yeah, but you couldn't get no sugar in it because you'd done it. <laughs> <laughs> one of the old yeah, tricks. Yeah, that's the old trick. That's, the, that's, for, that's for doing nonces and grasses, yeah. And uh, we, got, we got that and then, then they started... We had a, a right tear up one day and... Um, uh, I ended up looking after the governor, deputy governor, whatever he was, and um, we ended up getting, they, stuck, they opened the kitchen up, and we had our own chef over there. Food was hot then, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, all the things what these um, terrorists and that are getting now, is what we done extra bird for, and um, yeah. chokey time for. We, we got all that, and now they're- Stamping your feet, making a noise. Yeah, making yeah. We're having a tear up with the screws. Yeah. They, they were all big screws in that unit. Yeah. And um, some of them, there was two women screws in there. And uh, I don't know, but I had a couple of heart attacks in there. <clears throat> Which prison are we in here? We're in a Belmarsh. Belmarsh, yeah. Belmarsh, Belmarsh unit, yeah. 
I had a couple of uh, heart attacks here. And uh, when, I, when, when they took me out, they, they kept me hanging about in the gate in the ambulance, I was unconscious. But there was a, this, this woman at the school told me, she said, they was hoping you'd die before you got to the hospital. So that's why they kept them hanging about in, in between the gates, because there's so many gates to go through from the unit and all that. And, uh, but I got, got to the This is the disrespect that they've had for you they didn't like over me. the years because yeah. you've You've, um, they didn't like me. I don't like them, so it makes no difference, does it? But I, I got I got wind somewhere, and I, I stand corrected here, but I might be wrong. I'm doing my research. Didn't you assault a prison officer or a governor? And many of them. A writer <laughs> broke out. Didn't a writer broke out? And they wanted to be with you or something? Is, is that have I got that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how you had to be become his friend, was it? He didn't come off, friend. He got out of my arm. He didn't want to leave me. They wanted to hang in the IRA. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it all sort of turned around, but I never actually got charged with um, with um, taking the governor hostage. I got charged, charged with uh, uh, stopping him from leaving his place of work or something, something silly like that, because they would have hung him, they wouldn't care, you know, they're all going home anyway, the Good Friday agreement. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. So, so back to, back to, um, we, we touched on earlier, and I think we drifted off it by mistake. We touched on, they said, you can have a shower, there's a child killer coming in. No, so I'm naturally sure, yeah. thinking you're going to go and serve yeah, up a child yeah, yeah, killer, yeah, yeah. but you've, you've thought ahead, you're more street wise no, no, than no, that. No, 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 there's a 43 yeah. wing for them, not yeah, the, they, they as you them, said, yeah. the block. Did you call it a block for a section? What do you call your bit um, for the tough guys? The unit. The, the unit, unit, sorry, yeah. a unit. So, so you've got, so you got, you're in your unit. Yeah, a complete different prison. On completely own, different. Own, own walls, own garden, own so he never, he would never be there. He full stop. You know that. So you clocked that. Yeah. So, so now what happens? You go out for a shower. They're expecting you to serve him up, no doubt. I will go in there, and uh, there's all steam in there. So, Irish boy said, "Are you all right, mate?" I went, "You all right, mate?" So he said, uh, "What they told you, I am." And I said, "They told me you're a child killer." He said. No, he said, uh, I'm an IRA man. I went, oh. So I said, uh, I don't, don't really have it, but it, you know, bombers and it. He said, I ain't a bomber. He said, he said, I shoot people. I went, oh, fair play to you. And uh, he just, uh, he broke out of the maze. He would uh, broke out of a, a cut a nick up, nick up north. Shot two old Bill. And uh, I, I become quite friendly with him. Yeah. And I nicknamed him Dingus. Cross yeah. the Dundee, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, yeah, and uh, many years later, my brother was at the, my brother Ted's in the island fishing, in Southern Ireland, I think, yeah, in Southern Ireland. And he just got talking, and uh, t the geezer said to him, Where'd you come from? So he said, Rose Hill. He said, Rose Hill, he said, Is that near Sutton? From Rose Park? He said, Yeah. He said, What's your last name? He said, Phil. He said, I think I was an holiday. For a long time, your brother. Yeah, that was me. Of course. Well, what, co what a small world! What a yeah, we never yeah, expected, yeah, would you? And he never brought a drink all day. Really? <laughs> oh, they, lucky, lucky Ted, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was a pub full of fire, right, man? Yeah. Oh, there you go. So, so example. Um, we've all been. I, I have been involved with so-called firms. We used to have teams of that, or bigger firms. Right, that side of London, this side of London. Yeah. Um, and the harsh reality is, so there's a bit of friction there but when you actually go to meet individuals later in life or you get separated it all goes out the window so their political view they have a standpoint you have a standpoint but it all gets blown out the window you have a chat and you become friends it's strange how that can happen though isn't it yeah i, I don't think i could have been friends with a bomber because a bomb doesn't discriminate from women and children does it no not at all 100 percent. but someone who's an assassin does yeah. You know, I mean, so if he know, yeah, if he, if he knows out, he's not killing he, a, a woman or a child yeah. or an innocent bloke, he goes out and kills. No, I can see the, the difference in that. Oh, big difference, big difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah massively. He didn't go out and shoot. He never, never. I don't think he ever shot a civilian. He shot. He shot, he shot an SAS uh, major or a colonel. Yeah. Know that, and um, and arguably, without doubt, they would have shot him given the right circumstances, wouldn't they? I feel they did shoot him. Yeah. They didn't kill him, but uh, so I, this I, is I difference. Found him, if you're watching this, mate, remember the eggs. We had a little thing about the eggs. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you're watching this, the eggs. We had a big tear up over a boiled egg. <laughs> 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 Honest of my life. Yeah. yeah. So how would the friction go then if you're somebody who 
If it was plant, plant a bomb, but then you wouldn't, would you, would you, would you be near each other or would you just completely you stand off? Just wouldn't talk, yeah. You don't, don't um, insult each other, you just, just don't, don't have it, you know what I mean? You just yeah. don't have it, you know what I mean? That's, yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, when, when, after, after the tear up in Park Cross, I was in the hospital there, and um, a couple of the other, because I've got to give them their due, they, if it started, uh, don't matter who it was, they'd, they'd, they'd jump in, they'd be, they'd be there. Yeah. You know, they'll, 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 they'll jump in and they'll tear up with the screws. So, so if, if it kicked off in a right situation, maybe with the prisoners, not with... Oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Without, yeah, without a doubt, yeah, without yeah. a doubt. God, they were very staunch, so I don't... Yeah. I just couldn't accept um, blowing up kids and that, you know what I mean? Well, thank, thank God it's gone, no, well, exactly. Um, you know, whatever happened 800, 700, thousands of years, hundreds of years ago, it's not here and now, thank God we've gone past that. We can't, I think our great queen actually said recently, fairly recently, when she went in and shook the hands of one of the Sinn Féin leaders, I think Jerry it might have been Jerry Adams, was yeah, it? I'm still alive. Was it, was it Jerry Adams? I mean, yeah, it's one of them, or both, yeah, yeah. But she, she was in the Sinn Féin, yeah, Jerry yeah. Adams in, yeah? Yeah, she said that. And um, they, they shook hands and she actually said, we can't change the past, but we can build a future. Yeah. And I think that's nice to see on, on, a, on that, on that yes. note moving forward, isn't it? Yeah. She said to him, how are you? And she's, he said to her, how are you? And she said, I'm still alive. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there you yeah. are. They killed, killed Mount Batten, didn't they? Yeah, exactly. In fact, in fact, when that happened, the IRA and partners knew that night, the night before, because they said there'd be a big bit of news in the morning. Now we're a rude awakening, so uh, to speak. Yeah, they said in the morning there'd be a big bit of news. They knew they knew he was going to be blown up. Yeah, yeah. But there were some there were some quite high-ranking IRA, what we used to call it. Cheese roll and pint of Guinness, man, weren't in part They were the yeah. proper yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. commanders and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah of course, yeah. yeah. So, so it leads us on to your second major crime that you got convicted for. Um, it was a robbery at an airport. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that came on top, and uh, in fact, I, I was pulling out of it, and Johnny Folder said to me, "Would you carry on taking us down down to Gatwick?" So. I said, well, I said, I've run it down, I said, but it's gone on too long, I don't want, I, I, I don't want nothing to do with it. And uh, he said, well, just run me down, and uh, he said, I'll give you a drink when it goes down. And I went, so, oh. and so anyway, ran him down one morning, and uh, what we didn't know, they, it was all on top anyway. They, 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 they bugged all the rooms, they bugged the cars and everything, no, the, the getaway cars. And yeah. All, you know, so, um, there's a Gatwick Airport job, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. The 10 million pounds. They, they, they tried to nick it for 10 million pounds worth of gold. Yeah. But it was 10 million pounds worth of dollars. I don't know if we were going to get 10 million pounds worth of gold in the car. Yeah, <laughs> got, yeah in the car, a lot of but gold. It was 10 million pounds worth of diamonds, yeah. And um, that, uh, that came on top. I was sitting in the car in the car park, just going to go. And all of a sudden, all the old broke loose and the sirens going, I'll build flying in everywhere, guns pointing out. They, they, they said to me, my gun had already gone. I never had a gun. And um, they said, to me, they said uh, put your hands down and open the door. I went, no, fuck you, mate. I said, you open the door. And I opened the hands and I said, and I shat, and people started coming out of the hotel. And I just shouted out, I'm unarmed, I'm unarmed. They got me out, because they were going to shoot me. Yeah, and right, so the reason they, if you'd have put your hands up, if I down, so opened the door, they'd have shot me. And they'd have thought your gun, they'd no, they used to go they, for a no, weapon. No, they, 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 they said, later on in the morning, you and Johnny Folder, you know, old John's dead now, you were so lucky because you was going. They so, they, so they just wanted you to go hands down, think the door. in a pretend language under the door, he's gone for saying their excuses. I'd have had a gun in me that then, they'd have flown yeah, yeah. And uh, I didn't have that, you know. I mean, so they wanted to shoot you? They wanted to shoot me and Johnny Folder, yeah. That's they it. wanted you out of the way? Yeah, they wanted us dead, yeah. They, and I was going to do it at all. Yeah. And uh, I thought that's, that was the time that um, I decided that a change of uh, 
employment was. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, if they want to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they be dead, you know, exactly. So, so did, you, did you ever hunt at this stage? Because you, you said you know to what? one of your mates you didn't half fancy that job anyway, and then it was already bugged. Did you just, I'll, just I'll, think, I'll, Shank? I said to him, I'm, I'm pulling off at this. And but even if you had pulled off, it would have been too late anyway because they'd have been bugged cars and stuff from previous meetings. Yeah, I'm done for fucking spirits anyway. Yeah. But he said, would you just run the stand? He said, no, I'll give, I'll give you a drink. So I said, well, I ran it down, of course I will, you know. And so I used to run him down and uh, the job went on far too long. And, uh, yeah. These, these divers were supposed to be coming in and they weren't coming in and they were coming yeah, in. Yeah, just all of it, yeah. And we was there far too long and I said, I ain't, I ain't having this. Uh, not sniff of diamonds anyway, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they were there, right? funny enough. So, well, uh, so, 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 um, did inside, inside the informant somewhere, was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, yeah. and, and they um, told him, what they told him and all, but they nicked him as well, because he'd seen him talking to two of the others, and they, and they said, uh, Ron's going to kill you. You best tell us, because if you go to prison, uh, we're going to kill you. That's what, he, that's what he told us anyway, he was told. Told me you know, that uh, he was going to kill him to make sure he didn't, because he was a straight goer. Right. And he, he was all, he, he weren't a bad fellow, is it, Hams? He was all right. And um, he, 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 he weren't the grass. I don't know who the grass was. Good job you didn't find out with him, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know where he just. The other two sloppy and sloppy, you know what I mean? Do you think it? Do you think it pleases you when you look back that you didn't find the grass because you've had to go and do something again, or was it, or was it was such such um, disappointment and rage at whatever grass you would love to have found them and just went to work on them? How, how do you look at it when you're doing your porridge? You simmer down, you just think because they're out there, you can't change them, can you? You know what I'm saying is there's there's all out there, aren't they? You're always out there. If he's, gra if he's grassed once, he's grass again. So you put someone else away. I mean, Joe had a great saying, and a, a friend of mine will tell you, <clears throat> you don't earn no points for not grassing, because it's something you shouldn't do anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, people are coming here, you know. I, I, yeah, 100%, yeah. This is so so and say. You don't want a gold star for that, do you? He's just, just finished 10, done thing, 10 yeah. years, he's all right, he never said no. And Joe used to say, well, he's only done what you're supposed to do. Yeah, exactly. You're yeah. not supposed to say nothing. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Don't get no points for it. It's no, it's not done. You know, you just do what you have to do. Yeah. I think I've, I've gone all through my my criminal activities, but never even that. Well, I just wouldn't. I was just saying. They always used to say to me, "Tell us something you never know about Joe." We go right easy on you. Know? I don't know anything about Joe. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was it. They always wanted to know about Joe. Always. Don't matter how serious the crime was that I was dick for. They wanted to know about Joe. Coming to your final um, big crime, um, at the start of this show, I said when we mentioned the craze, um, you knew the twins, as commonly known. Mm -hmm. um, just give us some insight there. But of all people, um, your last um, Cody was none other than older brother, Charlie, Charlie Craze. Yeah, Charlie. Yeah. yeah, and you got 12 years with Charlie. Nine. So you got nine nine, nine, you got nine years. Nine, you got nine, nine years. Um, Charlie got twelve. Charlie got twelve, right, okay. And we went up on a pill and he was told that he was coming down to twelve uh, to nine and I was going down to six and that was after three or four days at a pill. And then we went up when we went up to get the verdict on the appeal and the Lord Chief Justice was sitting there. Yeah. And he went <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nitto, yeah. out with that one. Yeah. So, so tell us, um, you said a bit about Ronnie Cray, um, Reggie Cray. How does, how does um, Charlie ship within the twins? I mean, these boys are, are, are out there, the names are in lights, maybe be it for the wrong reason or the right reason, but every man and his dog knows the twins. Tell us about Charlie Cray. Of all the criminals in the world, including the world, Okay, we're British, we're London, England, British, but of all the criminals in the world, none can associate more with Charlie Cray. The twins have done their bit, they're serving 30, we know their fate, they've come out on their deathbeds. Oh, sorry, Ronnie died in prison, Charlie come out, his, uh, um, they all died in Reggie, prison. Reggie come out on his deathbed. What nobody knows, there's not a criminal alive 
had done the last job with the famous or infamous craze, whatever you want to call them, you were the very man, you're his co -D. Tell us about the Cray family, Charlie Cray. There's not another criminal in the world, including John Gotti. We're going to come to John Gotti in a bit, but there's not another criminal in the world um, as close as you were, and you're his co-defendant with Charlie Cray. So tell us what happened, how you got your porridge, how it went wrong. Um, Charlie, Charlie met, met these uh, three geezers. He, he used to go up um, uh, Newcastle or, or Birmingham, one, one of the places up there, and they used to go up there and, uh, to a nightclub and that. And uh, th these, these three geezers um, that stunned him and uh, buying him drinks and all that. And um, Charlie never had a lot of money. And they were buying him drinks and lighters and all this that and the other gold lighters. You know, Charlie Cray, oh, it's such a pleasure to know you and all that and all that. Yeah. And um, then and Charlie's boy died. So I, I, I was already having it with Charlie. And, you know, used, to, used to come over to a wine bar we used to go to, winners. Used to come over there and a couple of people, you know what I mean? They, everyone used to come to winners wine bar. Um, you know, any any faces, you know, always faces in there. And uh, the Charlie was coming over and all that, and he and he, and he said to me, um, my, "I'm having a um, a do for my boy who's died. His, his boy died, so um, he's having a do do at the um, Fairfield Zoo, I think it was. And uh, he'd invited these people down." who we were uh, under cover of our bill. But they, they, looked, they looked the part, they did look the part. Right. And uh, Charlie introduced me to them. So we were standing there talking, so uh, me and Charlie went for a pay, and I said, how long you know these, how long you know these men, Charlie? Because he was talking about a lot of things that really uh, was a bit, a bit touchy, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. He said, oh, I've known them years, known them years. So I, so I started talking to him, and, uh, but Charlie had me done in nine of a year. And uh, that was a sad thing because he, he just wanted the money. He hadn't really thought about, because they'd brought him a lighter and the music centre for his birthday. And, and they, was, they, they flew, flew us up to. Um, so when you say they wanted the money, what were they, what were they proposing? Now they, how are they trying to get they, um, they said to Charlie, set, set Charlie up? Well, where were we going? They, they said what? to Charlie, um, we want some cocaine, so he said, yeah, we can get you, we don't have no cocaine. And he said, oh, I can get you some cocaine. Can't we, Ron? I said, yeah. He's on the take, isn't he? You know, he's going to take their money and that's it, you know what I mean? So I said, yeah, I said, how much do you want? I said, oh. I'm oh, sure so he's looking to be on the knockup. You think Charlie's yeah, looking yeah, to be yeah. there? Uh, there weren't no, there weren't no cocaine. No. Grab, grab that. All oh, right, okay. So you just start their money, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's just going to have a draw from that. Right, going kind to of draw. So he's under under or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. Like, hypothetical amount of money, but yes, uh, uh, what you? Five weeks after that, they, 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 Charlie phoned me up, and he said, uh, "Remember little geezers?" I said, "Yeah." He said, oh, "They want, they want, want to fly us up up to Newcastle." So I said, yeah, I said, well, they want to, want to fly us out there, but he said, they want to have a chat. I said, so I said, what about? He said, pardon me, he said, I don't know, he said, they haven't said. I said, that's a bit strange, isn't it? I said, uh, I, said I don't really fancy it. So he said, uh, oh, come, he said, keep me company. He said, you know, he said, it's a free weekend, that they're paying for the hotel and everything else. So I said, yeah, oh, well, I'll come with him anyway, I'll help me go. Put us in this hotel. Put a, put a piss up. The cocktail waitresses were the old bill, the barmaid was old bill, everyone, everyone, yeah. everyone in the hotel was old bill. Yeah. For us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of them, Brian, all, all, he, all he wanted to do was keep throwing up brasses. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Good all the expenses, wasn't it? So. Yeah. <laughs> They've gone out of the way to, 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 to draw Charlie in. Kept going on for weeks and weeks and weeks. There weren't no coke. You know, I got approached. Um, by someone, I won't say who, and uh, they said they could, they could get us two key of coke. So I said, yeah, that'd do. I said, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. <coughs> and I took two, two key of coke off or one set of old bill, and <laughs> went up to Newcastle and gave it to two more old bill. And uh, we was all nicked. But yeah. I wouldn't have had nothing to do with him, because 
I thought Charlie had known him for years. He told me he had, but he hadn't. He was so it's it, it, it exaggerated the time he knew him. And, and don't um, get me wrong, I'm not, not saying nothing against Charlie. Charlie was a lovely man, he was a proper gentleman, and I loved him dearly, but he, he shouldn't have done that to me. And that, that, I think that's the first time we ever spoke about it. Really? Yeah. So do, do you think um, Charlie's exaggerated the time he's knew him, he said he knew him for years and he didn't, he knew him for a, for a year. Do you think though, um, if we go back with the notoriety that his brothers have got, the twins, how, how much this sounds like to me, edging on entrapment. It was entrapment. I mean, because Charlie, Charlie, you, you clearly said you, you you didn't have any drugs. You didn't. It was that they were just leading, 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 leading. How much did they want? What then? A seventy-year-old Charlie Cray or something pushing up towards 70, 65, 70? No, he, he was seventy odd then. <coughs> just goes to show yeah, though. They just wanted the. the Kilos of um, licking the last of the craze. The last craze. Yeah, they wanted him out of the way, you know what I mean? He wasn't doing no harm. He wasn't even a villain, really. No, he, 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 well, that's... He, he, he was a buyer and a seller of stolen. Well, I suppose he was a villain in that way, but... Uh, More of a crook than a villain. He was a crook. He, 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 weren't, he weren't... He didn't go around shooting people and all that. And he, in fact, he told he told the twins when they killed Jack the Hat, they said, this is the end of it all now. That's the finish now. You've done it. And... Uh, of course they got away with that for a little while, but the old Bill weren't having that going around killing them. They killed a lot of people, were we? So he's a much older man than Charlie? He was a gentleman. Charlie yeah. was a gentleman. Yeah. He was a proper gentleman. Well, that's, that's, that's nice to know. I've heard that many places, but oh, to come was. from somebody like yourself... He was a gentleman. Who, who you both had the misfortune. So it just goes to show what the old Bill are about. As a man that would have, would have carried on maybe selling a bootload of hooky gear here and there, and they've been trapped, and along the way, you wound up getting a nice, well, I say nice is the wrong word, isn't it? A load of, load of, Charlie, 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 load of used porridge to, as well. Charlie used to put people together. You wanted the summit, he wanted the summit, he'd put you together and get a drink. That's all Charlie done. That was his he, game, yeah? He, 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 weren't, he, he, he weren't a nasty man. He could have a row. Yeah. You no know, doubt about that. He was a good fighter. Yeah, good fighting man, yeah. Yeah, good boxer, yeah. Professional boxer, I mean. Yeah, right? he, he didn't go around yeah. shooting people and stabbing people and all that. How would Charlie have done with the twins? I know it's just a strange comparison. The twins had a fight, supposedly, if legend's right. They had fights with each other in the boxing ring they and did, outside. Yeah. How would Charlie have done with them two in a straightener? Could he, have, could he handle his younger twin brothers in a straightener? I, I, don't, think, I don't think he'd want to hurt them or, or fight them. He, he was a gentleman. A gentleman. He, he was just a gentleman, you know what I mean? But he's capable of being that sort of um, holding his own with him. Oh, he can, he can hold his hand, there's no, yeah, no yeah. doubt about that. No, no, it's lovely to hear as a gentleman. I, I find it a sad, a sad, a, a, a sad situation from the legend that his brothers left behind, um, famous or infamous, as I said, and to go and pick on a man because they've gone out of the way to entrap. Not only entrap him, they've entrapped you. Is but you, you've ended up getting nine years as well. Um, Charlie's got twelve. Died yeah. in prison. Died in prison. We were we allowed out for his prison. Um, no, no, I nearly died in prison. I had another heart attack in there. No, no. In fact, the, the governor. I went. I, I went to see the governor the week Charlie died over something completely different. Um, when, when, when they put, took me into the office, he said, "Before you ask, you're not going." I went, well, "I'm not coming there." It was something completely different. Yeah. You know what I mean, and because uh, he was, he was the governor, that <laughs> I grabbed hold of in the unit, and he, oh, was, right. he was now in charge of this nick. All oh, right. <laughs> So and yeah, you beat my mate again, it's another right, yeah. Yeah, and he, and, he, and he moved me about three weeks later, because he wasn't there when I got here, he was on holiday. <laughs> Unbelievable. As soon as he came back, he seen me. Unbelievable. So would you see would you see these prison governors and, and places, you move around, they move Nick's as well, as well as you sometimes? Yeah, really. yeah, I got quite, quite friendly. Yeah, I can say friendly. Uh, with a uh, deputy governor, uh, Tony, his name was, I won't say his last name because he might be doing quite well now, but <laughs> he was a gentleman, you know. I mean, some people you could take what they said and they knew it was true, and other ones. I suppose it's a people skill, isn't it? If you bomb with somebody, you bomb yeah, with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's the one who sent me to Belmarsh, I think, <laughs> from Brixton, but uh, yeah, I always found Tony all right, yeah. When, when, you've, when you've walked the walk, talked the talk, you've had the proceeds. Um, the you know the, the glory side of it, and you've done the porridge on the other side of it. No glory in porridge. Nah, no, nah, no. Nah. 
No, there's no glory in porridge, but you've had the um, the nice whistles, the nice cars, the bank rolls. You've had your times. Done me time. Do you meet? Have you? Do you meet many? Um, sort of, um, what's the word, these people come out and, and try to impress, you can see through them, you're a proper old school gangster, villain, do you sometimes come across people that... Yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I don't think I'm a gangster, I, I, was, a, I was a black guy, I was a, a robber. Is there a difference? Uh, I suppose not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy, he was a... Joe used to have him up singing opera and all this, that and the other. Toby, his name was, still is, complete arsehole. Lives in a fantasy world of Colombian drug lords and consulier and all that. He tells everyone he's a consulier and he, he, he told people on telly, on telly, he said, I don't know how he ever gets on there because a lot of people put him on shows like this one. He said that you know, he, he tried to get back from holiday to represent Charlie, Charlie Craig at his trial. You know, why would Charlie have a complete arsehole who's not even a solicitor representing him <laughs> at his trial, you know? He was just, a, so, he so, just, and he still is a complete fantasy. So you come across these people trying to impress, but you can, you, can, you can quickly see. You've only got to look at him, you've only got to listen to him. He, he, he wears uh, MBE badges, he, he wears oh, well, Night yeah. Templars. Yeah, yeah, things. yeah. Uh, he ain't nothing. He, he's just a complete idiot. I don't know how he gets away with it. He only lives around the corner and all. Oh, well, I've seen him. <laughs> so tell me, I was at a funeral. Um, that's where he. That's, I was at that's, a funeral. That's what he does. He turn, He's still got the same turn, cigar yeah. that he takes for every funeral. It's about that long. I never smoked it. He lights it once when the cameras yeah, and stuff. Lasted him eight years. And that'll something. be at the next funeral. Yeah. The next funeral. Whoever's funeral it is. That cigar will be there. <laughs> I don't think he even smokes, to tell the truth. <laughs> when I was at a funeral once, I've never seen more people at a funeral. And I've had some big family funerals. And I've seen the Craze um, funeral on television, but I estimated um, at least 3,000 at least three thousand people there. And that was the funeral of the legendary close friend of yours. Joey Paul, and you were so close that you were Paul Bearer at his funeral. I was Paul Bearer, yeah. And Joey was so I big. He died as well. Was you? Yes, I was, yeah. So proper close. I mean, that's, um, it says it all, I think. That's um, when, he, when he died there with him. Um, with Paul Bearer at his funeral. Now, it was a massive, massive funeral. Was circling ahead. I remember it was a police helicopter, just to let them know, to say, well, well you know, we're here, we're here right to the end. It's a game yeah. of cat and mouse. It's yeah, a they, game. They was in, they was in the, around the graveside. It's a game they, yeah. you played, game they played. Um, there were even, um, I stand corrected, but I'm fairly sure I've been mean, informed, there was two members of New York Mafia families there. I think the Gambino and the Genovese family. There was two members there, yeah. I yeah. mean, that's, yeah, there was, that's yeah. unbelievable. When, when we think about, Maybe arguably you Americans or people outside the world are fascinated by the craze. We're probably, as English people, equally as fascinated by maybe the mob. Yeah, equally. Yeah. But um, it just goes to show the power your close, close, great friend there, Joey Pyle, that the Genovese and Gambino families come over. And there was even a message once from the man himself, John Gotti. Tell us a little yeah. bit about that story. Yeah, well, we was in the unit and. Uh Joe, Joe was going to get his water for the night, you know, make a cup of tea and it. On my door. Who that? It's, it's me, bro. All right, Joe, he went, because you, know, you used to get your letters any time of the day, you know, whenever they decide to give them to you. Yeah. He said, I've just got a card. Wishing me all the best. I went, that's nice. I went, who's that from, Joe? He went, John Gotti. Yeah. Really? He went, I fucking needed that. Yeah. <laughs> Because yeah, they focused that every bit, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, that yeah. led to the prosecution and yeah, the, yeah. You know, that John Gotti had been in touch with Joey Pop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Amazing, amazing. It is amazing. Absol yeah. Absolutely amazing. But the, the power, how would you rank, um, you met the twins, you, 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 knew, you knew the twins, um, I think, I think you, you, you told um, Ronnie Cray on no uncertain terms when he gave you your gift. Um, what was it? But you did joke about it. You you went to visit Ronnie Cray, 
and um, he gave me he gave me his um, bracelet. <laughs> and uh, Joe was sitting there and he went, your, your name's Ron and I it. So I said, yeah, yeah. And he took this bracelet off and he went, there you are. I went, you sure, you, you did, because you had to be very careful how you, how you answered him or, or, you know, if I'd have blanked him, he'd have probably gone up in the air. Yeah. But I said, we're only friends, Ron. He went, and he had that, 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 that very scary smile of his, he went, yeah. He, did, he took it with a smile, didn't he? Yeah, he, he done it with a smile, but he, he, even his smile was scary. And so, then, uh, then um, Katie, a little while back, at my daughter's wedding, she had given me Ronnie's cufflinks. You know, his gold cufflinks. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. he always wore them. Yeah, she, she, said, she said, I think you're the only person to have these, she said. And uh, she was a lovely lady. Lovely, yeah. Kate, yeah, yeah lovely lady, beautiful lady. So Ronnie, um, you were given a bracelet by Ronnie Cray. It was actually his wife, Kate Cray, gave you the cufflinks. Um, yeah. mm. You knew Reggie. Um, Charlie was your codey. You knew these people. Um, the Genovese family, the Gambino family, have massive, massive notoriety um, in, 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 in the US. Now they were at your close pal, Joey Pole, your close, close staunch pal, who you were Paul bearer of, close, close friend, you were there when he died, right by his side. I was, yeah. How did Joey sit in? I mean, the British criminal, it's probably difficult for us to put him against the US criminals, but how did he sit in? What the US fans at home can take in is what we know here in the UK. He's obviously got massive notoriety to have those people at his funeral. How did he sit in? including the craze and all the other criminals, how did he sit in as a gangster in the UK to you? Joe was a governor. Really? I said to him once, I said to him once, many years ago, I mean, Joe, I was, I was very young, and I said, Joe, how, how come the twins are getting all this in the newspapers and all that? I said, they never mention us. He said, Ron, let them have the publicity, we'll have the money. Really? And that's the way Joe was, he was a businessman. Business and he was, he was respected both sides of the channel. Yeah. In America. Across that pond, this side. Yeah, this side, up north, he could go anywhere. And it, he went between the Twins and the Richardsons, the, the, um, the Arabs, everyone. He, he, he was friend, he was friends with everyone. Wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. I, I had, I had fact, the privilege. He saved a lot of people from getting very badly hurt or even killed. You know, what I mean? even I doubt. He could, he could, he could talk to people and solve. He'd rather solve a problem than cause one. He was a general. And but on the other side of the coin, if he wanted to switch a switch, he could switch anyone he wanted. He had all the power. Or if you, if yeah, you have people like, world, all if you have all the power, power like Gambino and Genovese family, it was you. And I think that says something, doesn't it? Yes. I mean, I, I didn't know them people personally, but uh, but they, they were friends of Joe's, and they was at his funeral. You know, and Joe got you sent him a letter in prison. So yeah, I know he didn't really need that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the wrong but time. It, it, it come, you know. What I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and Joe, Joe, Joe was drinking and eating with him over, over, over there, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, Joe, Joe was very respected, man, very respected. I don't know anyone who was, had more respect from everybody than Joe did. He, 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 he just commanded respect. You know? Lovely, lovely, lovely touch. It sounds almost like a touching thing to, to a good friend who's been, been gone now, what, 10, 12 years, Joe? 12 years. Now, yeah, it's a lo lovely, lovely story. How do we make um, ends meet these days? And what, what are we up to? Oh, I've got my pension. All oh, right, okay. And that. Um, that's about it. That's it. That, that sort of keeps you satisfied and happy. Well, you're, yes. You're still dressed nice and dapper. You're still turning on the All style. old gear. All old gear. <laughs> Paid by who in the past? <laughs> uh, we'll say no more. <laughs> now, for the fans at home, now you, you've got to look at it, this is the way I like signing off and um, you have a little bit of a deep think about this and come up with the answer when I put it to you. Through your career Ronnie, um, you have had 
A 12, I think you've been sentenced to 28 years in prison. Yeah. Yeah. You've been pulled in for, you've been convicted of five shootings? Five shootings, yeah. Yeah. You only lost one fight, because you don't fight straight. You lost one straight, and then the rest you've done all right, him. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm no good um, at fighting. You got pulled in for, you know, questions. Questions Question. for four murders. Four murders, yeah. None, of course, which you didn't do. Of course, no. you didn't. No. No. Well, that sounds good. Um, you've had a lavish lifestyle, and you've had the hardship prison. Do you have any regrets through all this life? Not for myself. No, for my family, yes. I, I re regret for my family, for my daughter. For her mum, I mean, her, her, her mum was um, with me when I was at my most. Nastiest, brutal, not, not to her. Yeah. But she seen things that women shouldn't really see, you know what I mean? Through all this life, um, with your regrets, Certain sides of it for others, none for yourself. A young person out there looking at yourself, looking at the craze, looking at being a close association with Joey Pyle, yeah. All of this stuff, looking at all that, anybody with any ideas about being a criminal, what's your message out there to any youngster watching? Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't start. As Joe used to say, the money is good, the hours are short, the holidays are long. There you go. Do you hear that? And I think that's great advice. Today, all yours, yeah, and absolutely all my pleasure here in the southwest part of London. Yes, the legendary, the one and only. It's been a real, real privilege. My 100th video of the show. Of course it is a legendary one and only Mr. Ronnie Field. Thank you very very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you Shall we much. have another one? Of course. Or two. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well let's get us raise a glass to the boys yeah. out there, yeah? All those who all all are banged up. Quite that all those are banged up. Quite yeah. don't pay but we do pay for our drinks these days. We <laughs> pay for our own. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Remember click subscribe Christy TV.